All right, folks, today I'm gonna to be going over how to compression test on your Cummings generator engine. The reason why I'm doing this is if you check out our Cummings generator troubleshooting mini series, it's uh, just two videos. I'm gonna go through and show you how to kind of diagnose or troubleshoot your generator. We found that ours was, was total failure. Um, the crankshaft and, and all that was just toast. So I went through and explained all that, but we also found that from the alternator and the engine aren't meant to be separated, so there's really no way to just replace the crank. So it's totaled. So did a bunch of research on parts, couldn't find any parts. So we got a replacement unit off of Craigslist. That was pretty much our only option. We found a unit that had caught on fire um, and the module and some of the wiring got fried, but it looks like the block and the alternator should still be good. The first thing that I'm gonna check is the engine. I'm gonna check it for compression. I haven't checked the valve lash adjustment on it. That could be out. And as long as our compression is good, we're gonna go ahead and transfer our fire unit onto our good unit and then anything that I can salvage I'll take off and I'll put online so yeah I'm gonna take you through and show you the process of how to compression test your Cummings engine so I want to show you if you guys blow up your engine our alternator rotor is pretty much it's pretty much permanently affixed by these pins if you're at home and you're a do-it-yourselfer, I'm sure you could get creative, drill out those pins, but this is for a company that I work for and I have to make sure that whatever I'm doing, it's gonna last a long time. So we're just gonna swap it out with this. This is the unit that caught on fire. This is also a lesson to be learned. If you're working on any of the fuel lines, double check that there's no leaks. This guy fried his module. Basically what happened is he was working on this fuel filter, didn't tighten the line enough, it was leaking, he was running it until it got hot, and instead of using a fire extinguisher, a class B fire extinguisher, which you need for fuel fires, he put some water on it, he made it even, that fire even worse, totaled the unit. But in a way it kind of worked out because now we'll be able to take this unit, we'll salvage the engine and alternator, give it new life, but we gotta test it first. So let's get that set up. I've got a little battery here that I'm gonna to attach to that starter motor. And uh, yeah, let's get this thing set up. Okay, so we're all set up here to do our compression testing. Uh, if you're doing this well, the, your generator's in your RV or toy hauler, uh, you wanna make sure that the fuel line is disconnected and you're not dripping fuel everywhere so you don't catch your generator on fire like this guy did. And you're gonna to need to pull your spark plug. I'm sure you probably already know, it's a 13 sixteenths socket size on that. And then you're gonna to want to thread in your compression kit. Now you can rent one from O'Reilly's. I think it's free. I think you just pay a deposit and then once you return it, you get your deposit back. I don't know. I've never actually rented a tool from there. I just know that they have that program. I think other auto parts stores too, too, but there seems to be really versatile. If you do enough engine work to where you're thinking that you would want to invest in a compression test kit, I'd really recommend this kit by Lang. Lang Tools, they're a great brand. It's a great kit, I use it quite a few times. I went with Lang because when you're looking for a compression tester kit, the cheaper kits, you'll notice the cheaper kits come with a lot of these little attachments. I'd really recommend almost never using these, um, especially if you work in like a shop environment or somewhere where you're kind of in a rush. The issue that you run into with these and with uh, inserting compression test kits in general is if you accidentally do it on a warm engine and as you're testing it starts to cool down, that tolerance is gonna shrink on there and it's gonna grab onto this thing. And it's a nightmare to try to get it back out. So I got this link kit because it comes with so many full size attachments. So if you know something does get stuck down in there, you have a lot more to work with to get it out. And a nice thing that I noticed about this one 
is this attachment does have a place for a socket head. My other kit did not have that option. It was rounded out like these are. So if you're gonna do this, do it on a cold engine. If you work at a dealership or somewhere kind of high pace and you're looking to invest in one of these, uh, this Lane kit's great. Every engine I've come upon, it's had an adapter for full size. And if I do need to use this, I can put this on here. And then they really do a good job of hooking you up with extra O-rings and Schrader valves. You'll notice at the tip of these, there's a little Schrader valve in there. Now, during our engine testing, if it gets to the point that we realize we need to do a leak down test, don't forget to take out your Schrader valve when you're doing your leak down test or you're gonna be really confused with your results. Um, but we're just gonna start with the compression test. If compression looks good, cool. We're gonna just move on and get work on transferring over this block and everything to my other setup. Um, if it's not, we'll do a leak down test and figure out our rings bad. Do we have bad valve lash adjustment? Do we have a chipped valve? You know, all that good stuff. I have my unit obviously out here in the garage. I've got a little car battery and I'm basically just gonna bump this starter. I've got my negative to chassis ground. I would consider this bucket that it sits in its chassis. Uh, we'll bump this starter and we're looking for compression. For those of you not so familiar with engines, your engine is just a fancy air squisher. The better it can squish air, the higher this number will be. If it can't squish air very well, it'll be down here. Now, the problem that I have is I don't have any specifications for how much compression needs to take place. Usually when I'm doing a compression test on an automotive vehicle, I'll look up a specification from the manufacturer and generally it'll say, you know, something like compression should be found to be between 150 and 180 PSI with no more of a difference than like 15% between cylinders. I've heard that you need at least 90 on gasoline engine for combustion, but I don't know if that's true and I'm not gonna look it up. I'm just gonna test this thing and I'm hoping for like 120. I think on this thing that would be probably right. Let's bump this starter and see where it goes. I haven't done the compression test yet on it, so you guys will see the results with me. Oh yeah, another note. When I pulled this spark plug out, it was loose. So the last guy that touched this put it in way too loose. You wanna make sure they're super tight in there. What happens if you put them in too loose? Well, this thing vibrates like crazy and this spark plug will work its way out and eventually you get to a point where you'll have combustion in your engine and you know maybe there's just a few threads there and then it's gonna pop that out. It's gonna trash those threads and now you're in a real pickle because you're gonna have to pull this whole thing out to fix those threads. It's gonna be a nightmare. So make sure you get your spark plugs in tight. If you're doing them on a car, torque them. I've learned that the hard way over the years. I have had customers come back and I'm doing maintenance and I find that their spark plugs are a bit loose. So it's a personal rule of thumb and I think it should be a rule of thumb for everyone out there. Whenever you're doing spark plugs and you can get a torque spec, torque them. Okay, let's bump this starter, see what we get. Okay, chassis ground didn't work. So I moved my ground over here to the body of the starter and hopefully this will work. This starter might be bad. Okay, we got something locked up. I think it's just this fan um, because this housing is trash so let's get this fan housing off and we'll try again Okay, so we got that cover off. I kind of went at it a little barbaric because it's, you know, the thing's melted. It's garbage anyways. It's just trash. Um, but this actually gives us a better look at, uh, at our fan, our starter, all this stuff. Probably should put on some safety glasses in case some 
debris wants to fly up. There's a bunch of debris in that pan. So I'll toss in some glasses. Let's bump this starter and see if that needle goes up. But I didn't have my thing secure enough. Okay, nice and secure. Okay, let's try again. I think I saw it go over 100. Okay, so we're maxing out just about at 100, which I think is good. I think that's a number I can live with. I'll show you guys the gauge. Probably couldn't see it very well on camera. Ta-da, just over 100. I think that's good. I have no reference, but it's good enough to make me uh, wanna, wanna use this engine. And debris did fly up everywhere. I think you guys saw that. But cool, now I can uh, message the guy that this is going to let him know that he bought a good engine off Craigslist and then we can move forward with the repair. All right, folks, there you have it. Uh, that's how to compression test your generator. See the health of it. Um, anytime you get a used engine, do, do a compression test. It doesn't take that long. On the next Cummings video I'll do, I'll show you guys the actual swap over into the new one. The biggest thing I'm gonna have an issue with is probably the wiring of the alternator. I think the wiring at the bottom end by the module, I don't know if it's good. So I'll probably end up cutting and splicing all that alternator wiring over. I'm really stoked that we have a good ending. So hope you had a fun adventure in the garage and I'll catch you guys next time.